Hello and welcome back to Fallout Who Vegas. Today I'm going to be showing you how to fly your TARDIS around the Mojave. There are three ways to do this. Random, Vortex and Programmable Flight. First thing you should know however, at level 1 piloting skill you can use your zigzag plotter which will allow your randomized flights. At level 3 you can use your vortex loop which will allow vortex flight. And at level 7, you can use the navigations mode, which will allow navigational flights. If you lack the ability to use one of these controls, when you try to use them, up the top left hand corner, it will tell you can't. At level 10 piloting, you will be able to activate the TARDIS autopilot. It will cost you 20% of your power, which also means you will not be able to configure every single room and have every single auxiliary system running. You can activate it on the primary controls systems on the TARDIS scanner. Once activated, you'll be unable to disable it. However, while in flight, it will automatically fly you there. You will not need to do anything while in flight except wait. When you land anywhere in the TARDIS, if you use the deep scan here, it'll tell you to go out the TARDIS door. Leaning outside will add any nearby locations to your pit point. Quite useful, obviously, if you're doing your randomized flights and you're landing in random locations, you can just get a bunch of things added. Deep scan is located here on the coral theme. Right, here's a short list of the things you're going to need to remember for flight. One, your zigzag plotter. Two, your vortex loop. Three, your helmet regulator. Four, your space-time throttle. Five, your time rotor handbrake. Six, your directional pointer. Seven, your atomic accelerator. 8 your navigations mode, 9 your lockdown mechanism, and 10 your gyroscopic stabilizer. And here's the list again for you people with flying coral. Your vortex loop is located here, navigations keyboard here, space time throttle here, zigzag plotter here, atomic accelerator here, direction pointer here, helmet regulator here, time rotor handbrake here, lockdown mechanism here, and your gyroscopic stabilizer here. Your pilot's logbook, which is located on both themes, when used, will tell you your piloting experience and your temporal engineering experience. It will tell you how much XP you need to gain and where you're currently at with your XP. Once you've got your XP into the next piloting level, you will level up, obviously allowing you to use more controls and different flight modes of the TARDIS. While flying your TARDIS, when you use a component and hear this noise, that means you've done it right and you are gaining XP. When it comes up with a component and you do the wrong one, you'll hear that noise, which means you're losing XP. If you quickly do the right one, however, you can recover. So, randomized flights. When used, you'll materialize in a random location. To take off in randomized flight, you need to start with your zigzag plotter. Move over to your helmet regulator. Space time throttle, lockdown mechanism, and then finally the handbrake. Top left hand corner it will tell you which component to use. Make your way round to the correct panel and use it. It will only ask you, so far, to use the list that I have given you. However, more components may be added in the future. As you fly and use components, your piloting XP will slowly go up. Once you have materialized, you can head out the door to see where you've landed. It appears we've landed in the Prospector Saloon. If we head back inside and head up to the TARDIS scanner, we can then use the navigations computer, go straight down to G, 
and you'll see the Good Springs Prospector Saloon has been added to the list. And that is Random Flight. So, to take off from Coral theme is exactly the same, except for the controls look slightly different. So, it's Zigzag Plotter, Hammock Regulator, Space Time Throttle, Lockdown Mechanism, Handbrake. same sequence of events will start. Make your way around the console to the correct panels using the correct components when it asks in the top left hand corner. And you'll eventually materialise. Heading out the door, exactly the same as with the Levin's theme, you'll be put in a random location. which will be in the Town Hall first floor of Nipton. If we head back in, make our way around to the scanner. Give it a quick use. Navigations computer. ITP. N for Nipton. Nipton Town Hall. As you can see, it's quite clearly been added. And that's all you need to know on randomised flights. Now we're going to talk about Vortex Flight. To take off, do vortex loop, helmet regulator, space time throttle, lockdown mechanism, handbrake. Please note you need to be level 3 to do vortex flight. Vortex flight is quite simply infinite. You will not materialize anywhere until you choose to. It's just a constant wait, use a component, then the next component, then the next component. This is a good way to grind XP to get your piloting skill up quickly. However, the main issue with it is it will not add any locations to your navigations computer. When you are done with vortex flight, you simply pull your time rotor handbrake and you'll materialise exactly where you dematerialised. And once again, this is how we do it in Coral. So, vortex loop, helmet regulator, space time throttle, lockdown mechanism, time rotor handbrake. Again, it's another infinite flight just to grind yourself XP. It will just be component, component, component. Until you then use the handbrake to rematerialize. And exactly the same, you'll rematerialize where you dematerialized. And that's all you need to know about Vortex Flight. Now I'm going to show you programmable flight. Currently we are at the Devil's Throat. If we head back into the TARDIS and use Navigations Keyboard Helmet Regulator Space Time Throttle Lockdown Mechanism and again the Handbrake take off. Once in flight, use the TARDIS scanner, go down to navigations computer, enter location coordinates, if we go down to G, Gibson Scrapyard. Once you've clicked and selected it, simply turn off the scanner and return to your normal flight procedures. Obviously it will keep prompting you in the top left hand corner which ones to use. Keep using them until you materialise. Once you've materialised, we simply head outside the door. You can quite clearly see we've landed in Gibson Scrapyard. 
Now I'll show you it in Coral theme. Make sure you've got Coral configured. Head back into your TARDIS. Make your way round to your navigations computer. Use it. Helmet regulator. Space time throttle. Lockdown. Handbrake. Same as before, head over to your console scanner, navigations computer, um, I don't know, we'll try Repcom. Once you've selected it, turn off the scanner and resume all flight procedures. Voila, we've materialised. Head straight outside the door. And here we are at Repcom. A couple more things you should know guys. The first thing is, you can get written instructions on piloting with your TARDIS index, TARDIS how to, piloting and the three different flight modes that are available for you to read. And that's everything you need to know about programmable flight. You can check your fuel by looking at the Artron readout. When you do it, you'll get your fuel in the top left hand corner. Using three components like so, one, two, three will lower your fuel by five percent. You'll want to make sure that you land and refuel your TARDIS before it hits zero. When your TARDIS is low on fuel, it's time to make sure you top her back up. To do that, simply materialize and activate the Artron Banks lever. She'll go dark and you'll be unable to fly her. It will ask you to leave the TARDIS. I've chosen the Prospector Saloon as you need to be somewhere safe as you will be unable to enter your TARDIS for the time it takes to refuel. Joe's awesome shader effect will also come into play. While refueling, it will be purple. And just to prove, you're unable to enter until it's done. The more amount of fuel she needs to replenish, the longer it will take for her to regain that fuel. It can take up to five minutes to refuel your TARDIS. Once it's done, that noise and the notification in the top left hand corner will sound, meaning you can re-enter. And she's lit back up and ready for flight. You can find Coral's Artron Banks here on her console. Also, if you use weaponry on your TARDIS console, you can damage her components. You will not be able to reuse them however, and they are unfixable. Which means you'll no longer be able to fly her, which basically means your TARDIS loves you. Love her back! Please note that you cannot leave the TARDIS while in flight. You are, however, able to enter the TARDIS depths. Doing this in flight is not a good idea as it will still ask you to do the components, which will damage your TARDIS, as you just heard that explosion. You can check your shield oscillators on the shield readout. Currently 100%. However, if we miss one of the components in flight, there will be an explosion and your shields will go down. Miss another, your shields go down even further. Miss it again, and your shields go down to zero. From then on, every component you miss will damage your TARDIS master components on the engine. So it's important to materialize as quickly as possible. Once you have materialized, your shields will jump back up to 100% ready for the next flight. If you fail to use the components, once your shields are down, eventually you'll hear that sound and this box will appear. Danger. 
When the cloister bell sounds, you'll be alerted by a deep, distant gonging in a slow warning fashion. This is to inform you that the TARDIS is in mortal danger, whereby one or more of its main components is below 25%. To overcome this imminent threat, you must either apply immediate repairs or pull off an emergency landing, or pilot the ship to safety. Don't panic guys, in my next video I'll be going over TARDIS maintenance and repair with you. Please note that as well as failure to use a component when it asks you to, if you use the wrong one, the TARDIS piloting experience will drop. And that's the end of this video guys. I've shown you how to fly your TARDIS, refuel her and how to avoid damage. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can.